off rep, superstars, media. My people, my people, <laughs> my people, my people, all set to go, all set to go, my people, my people, I call on at two times, my people, my people, now how on a day, I say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night, depending from where you're listening to the sound of my voice, this one, now Biafra Superstars Media, and I'm holding it down, I say may God bless Biafra, and may God bless His Excellency, Oyendo Mazinam the Kano. May God bless, may God bless, may God bless His Excellency, the Prime Minister of the Biafra Republic of Minton Exile, His Excellency, ESN, Ekma, Simon and Joko, for the job Simon is doing. Simon, I want to say we thank you. We appreciate you. We love you because we know in your hands Biafra is coming, in your hands Biafra is safe, and in your hands when Biafra comes, the people, the children, even the neighbors living in the bite of Biafra, we shall rejoice because goodies and blessings shall come upon the land and from the land of Biafra we shall shine a light into the bite of Biafra. From the bite of Biafra we shall shine a light into West Africa. And 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 from West Africa the Biafra light shall shine into Africa. And from Africa to the whole world Simon Ekbar this is why we need Biafra. The urgency of now. <laughs> my fellow Biafrans, this one should be very well as you can see in my screen. We are still doing some more collaboration, some more discussion, some more diplomatic discussions and ties are still taking place. And as you can see, the Biafra now has a new partnership and we have completed the new diplomatic ties with the great man they call Tibor Nagy. Ambassador Tibor Nagy is a man who is respected in America. He was once one of the most eminent diplomats of the former United States of America when it comes to the secretarial and things around African affairs. Yesterday, our PM declared and told the whole beer friends of the very eventful meeting he had with Mr. Tibor Nagy. My Biafrans, the more we are doing our job, the more we are fighting towards Biafra. Please allow the naysayers, allow those who are trying to distract us not to take your mind. We must keep our eyes on the rising sun because with this great man called Tibonagi being on, him on board, that means he has an experience of the African affairs. He understands the politics of Africa. So I am so glad our Prime Minister has gotten this man on board. We thank our PM because we know, we know, we know that this thing called Biafra, come what may from the 2nd of December, we shall be rejoicing in the land of Biafra. Lord have mercy. Listen. Also, my people, sadly, 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 the enemies have come amongst us. Those that gave us a bad name in 1966. And for 58 years, we have been carrying that bad name like a trophy wherever we go. In the year 1966, those that claimed to be stakeholders of Nigeria, they went for a coup. They carried out the coup. It was done by the military in 1966. But somehow they were able to turn around, spin things around, spin the news, and peg the coup and Igbo coup. Before you know it, a man who was championed as a son of Kaduna, a champion of Kaduna, the man they call Kaduna Inziogu. He was nicknamed by the Northerners as Kaduna Nziogu. Despite his name is Chukwemeka Nziogu. But in order to lay ownership of him, they threw away the Igbo side of his name and they called him, they nicknamed him Kaduna Nziogu. Lord have mercy. Since then till now, 58 years and counting, they lied on a particular man 
they lied on a particular tribe. They said, blame the Igbos for the coup. And most of us, we grew up listening to that same rumor. We grew up as children reading about Kaduna and Ziyogo. We saw this man who is full of life. We saw a picture of a man who is always smiling. And I asked myself, back then I asked my history teacher. I said, Madam, with all due respect, this man looks like a good man. He's smiling in all the pictures you have shown us. The man they call Kadunan Ziogo, he's smiling in all the pictures you have shown us. How come is this man evil? And she told me, don't allow the smile to fool you. He was an evil man. He was a bad man. He betrayed his comrades. Because they all went to a coup. They organized a coup. And before you knew it, only this man chose not to kill those from his own tribe. He was the head. He was the lead of that coup. And that's why they call it the Igbo coup. So forget about a smile. See him as a wicked man smiling for the evil he has done to Nigeria. As a child, I was in Lagos taking government class where that was said. But I kept on looking at the face of Kaduna Nziogo and I said to myself, this man cannot be what they claim he is. But sadly, for 58 years, 1966 till 2024, 58 years, that lie has been a scorn to the flesh of the Igbos. That lie has justified the hatred of the Igbos. That lie has led to the other tribes conniving, colluding against the Igbos. That lie is the reason why those who believe in one Nigeria they said the Igbos can never be allowed to rule their shithole country called Nigeria. We were kids when we heard about Kadunan Ziogu. Some of us were not even born when that could take place, when it took place. But today, something new has come up. Today, we are about to see the same thing that happened in 1966 replay itself. If we are not careful, my fellow Biafrans, as we are about to leave Nigeria, if we are not careful, this thing that the Afonjas are spinning around us, during those days in 1966, it was the Nottanas that lied on a man they loved so much, Kadunan Ziogu. In 1966, it was the Nottanas that gave a dog a bad name just to hang it. They lied on the man they love. Kadunan Ziogu was their champion. When it comes to the military sports and events, Kadunan Ziogu was number one. He was so good that the Northerners, they took ownership. They owned him. They called him one of their own. Why would you blame them? He is somebody who was born in Kaduna. His parents, they lived in Kaduna. His siblings... We're all based in Kaduna. Lord have mercy. His father died in Kaduna. He went to school in Kaduna. He got married in Kaduna. And he was a champion. He was a highly reputable soldier in Kaduna in the north. Which made the Northerners to claim him. They took ownership of him. And from that day on henceforth, they were calling him Kaduna Nziogu. That was the name, that was the way the nickname came. Kaduna Nziogu. The same way in the case of Pepe Taobi now, they love him, they're calling him Obedience. The same way for Tinubu in Lagos, they call him Jagaban. During those days, he was appreciated, he was loved by the Northerners. And they called him Kaduna Nziogu. But today, what happened in 1966 is about to repeat itself. This man you are seeing in this video, 
I will show you what he's saying. I keep telling you guys, an organized lie can defeat a disorganized truth anytime. An organized lie can defeat a disorganized truth every time. If the lie told on Kaduna and Ziogo in 1966 is still a scorn on the Igbos, it's still a problem on the Igbos, it has given us a bad rap in that zoo called Nigeria. It meant there is now a justification to treat the Igbos the way they've been doing us all this while. Through the lie of Kaduna and Ziogo, they were able to now justify the presence of the federal government not being in the southern or eastern or southeast or what they want to call it. Today, it's about to happen again. Today, I want you all, even the Yorubas, the Hausa, the, the youths of that zoo called Nigeria, what you read in 1966 about a coup and an Igbo man being responsible, it's about to replay itself in 2024. And now they are claiming that what is about to happen in Nigeria from the 1st of August till the 5th of August, the so-called protest, the end bad governance protest in Nigeria, they are now saying it is the Biafrans who are responsible. They are now saying what we want to do is a civilian coup. They blame it on Nam the Kano. They blame it on Simon Ekman. They blame it on the Igbos. How long will this last? If this lie continues unchecked, are you ready to go on for another 58 years where this lie will help to subjugate you? Are you ready to watch your children, your unborn children, go for another 58 years to be subjugated by Nigerians because we are responsible for a protest that took out a president? My fellow Bia friends, if you're ready, I will just play you just a video to let you know what they are saying about the Bia friends in nigeria i want to believe you have seen all the whole videos in the social media blame the Igbos. the Igbos are responsible they want to use it to release the number canal blame simon Ekba. he is the one doing from abroad Igbos are responsible we are ashamed because of peter will be lost election if you are ready Listen to what this man is saying. At least this man from his age, from his face, you can tell he was born during the Biafran War. He saw what played out in 1966. He is an elderly man. This man talking now, he is an elderly man. But I want you to listen to what he's saying. To the Yorubas, you have to checkmate your own. When your elders are going astray, you must checkmate them. Is getting out of hand because if you don't checkmate these guys over time they will make us to start seeing you guys as snakes that cannot be trusted so far since the partnership with chief sunday Igboho, i have tried by my best to differentiate the afonjas from the yorubas but please when men like this are speaking I expect the good Yorubans to come out and say, not in my name shall we allow this man, people like this, to tarnish the image of another tribe and of another nation. Because men like this, they are prepared to tell a new lie that for the next 50 or 60 years, the Igbos, the Biafrans, will be put through hell. If you are ready, I want you to sit back and relax. And hear what this man said. I will allow this video to play over and over and over again. When you hear what he's saying, look at his face. Look into his eyes. Make a guess 
of his age he is an elderly you say we should respect our elders but look at what this man is spilling from his mouth then tell me what you think about this if you're ready let's go there listen listen what i've been saying in yoruba is that the planned nationwide protest is a strategy new strategy by the only books to destabilize or truncate the democratic governance in this country simply to fence their spleen on Yoruba nation where well, they are not happy as they lost the 2023 uh, presidential elections they are not happy and those who are confessing for this insurrection the felons they are felons confessing for this insurrection are either labor party members or IPOB, the Igbo stock in that party. Why? So I want to appeal to the youth and the elders, patriotic citizens of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, to shun that protest. The protest is aimed at truncating the democratic process. And we should not allow that. Protest you. Listen. What I've been saying in Yoruba is that the planned nationwide protest okay. is a strategy, new strategy by the only books to destabilize or truncate the democratic governance in this country. Simply to fence their spleen on Yoruba nation. But well, they are not happy as they lost the 2023 uh, presidential elections. They are not happy. And those who are confessing for this insurrection, the felons, they are felons. Confessing for this insurrection are either Labour Party members or IPOB, the Igbo stock in that party. Hmm. Why? So I want to appeal to the youth and the elders, patriotic citizens of the Federal Republic of Nigeria to shun that protest. The protest is aimed at truncating the democratic process. And we should not allow that. Protest you. Hold on, hold on. What you've just heard, my people, is a replay of what happened in 1966. This is a perfect example of what happened to the man they call Katunan Ziogo. What was so strange was after this so called attack, after this cheap blackmail on Katunan Ziogo, they now turned his name, they took away the Kaduna. They were then calling him Chukwe Mekan Ziogo. When you go through the tabloids of 1966, they snatched away the Kaduna from his name. They now called it Chukwe Mekan Ziogo. That way, the other gallant men in the military now turned against themselves. I keep telling you, an organized lie can defeat a disorganized truth every time, if unchecked. An organized lie can defeat a disorganized truth every time. During those days, there was no social me media, so nobody heard from Kaduna and Ziogo. We didn't hear him explain how the coup took place, even though there was a book, Why it Was Struck and all those things. But for 58 years and counting, the Igbos are still paying for the sins of one man. The alleged sins of one man. Despite the birthplace of Kaduna and Ziogu, when you trace it back, his parents, they're from Delta State. When you trace it back but to today even those in delta states they are safer than those they call the southeast what i'm trying to tell you is this it's not about kaduna and Ziogo. it's not about the coup it's about you being a beer friend it's about the hatred the envy and jealousy they have for you which is why they would tag anything on you just to blemish you, to tarnish your image, and bring 
a kind of support for the inhumane things they are doing to you. So right now, I want us to break this video down. I want this to get into your mind. See where this a man like this, an elder, you 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 will tell me this man is an elder. You will tell me to respect my elder. Look at the vile things this man is saying about the tribe. Look at what this man is saying about a tribe, about the people. They claim they believe in one Nigeria. We have said, allow us to go. They say, no, they believe in, in one Nigeria. They say the Igbos will not go. The Biafrans will not go. They believe in one Nigeria. Yet, when it comes to something they are doing for a protest, ordinary protest, they've turned around and they are blaming the Igbos. By proxy, they are blaming the Biafrans. Because he mentioned IPOB, not IPOB Nigeria Limited, the real IPOB, which is us. And IPOB is an acronym for the indigenous people of Biafra. Over 70 plus million people. This man is blaming us for a protest. Despite when they were doing their election, our Prime Minister, His Excellency, Mazi Ekpa Simon Njoku said, he ordered, he gave an order, an instruction that the Biafrans should not partake in that election. But somehow, once again, in 2024, they are blaming the Biafrans for a forthcoming protest. Protest is, is done around, around the whole world. In America, in France, in Britain, everywhere you go, there is protest everywhere. But when it comes to Nigeria, they will spin things around and put hatred on the Biafrans. Right now, I have to break it down. I want to break it down. I want you all to hear what this man said. Line for line and word for word. If you are ready, let's go there. Listen. What I've been saying in Yoruba is that the planned nationwide protest is a strategy, new strategy by the Undibos to destabilize or truncate the democratic governance in this country. Hold it there. He said what he has been saying all this while is that the so-called planned protest is something that was being orchestrated by the Indibos, the Igbos, in a bid to destabilize the democracy of that so-called Nigeria. Last time I checked, the end bad governance in Nigeria was a child project from the north. It came from the north. Last time I checked, revolution now, rage of protest, it came from the man they call Showore. Which was why last week I told Showore live in my program, I said he must take ownership. When you check the Zoom media, even the government, they have not called Showore's name. Has been responsible for the protest. No. They've been calling the name of Onam Dekano, Indigo, Simon Ekpa. People living abroad, looking for freedom. They've been blaming us. Nobody, no politicians in the zoo has called Showore's name. Even Mike Onanuga, or what's his name, Bayo Onanuga, the idiot. He called the name of Onam Bekano and Peter Obi. That's the game they're playing. They know deep inside their DNA there is a hatred for Ndi Igbo. So the moment they say the Igbos are responsible, suddenly that tribalistic netting in their mind, it is in it, it is in their culture. They say envy turns to jealousy, jealousy turns to hatred. Envy turns to jealousy, jealousy turns to hatred. When you envy somebody, over time, the envy will now turn to jealousy. When you begin to jealous somebody, you are jealous in a tribe, you are jealous in a people, over time, it will turn to hatred. Envy turns to jealousy, jealousy turns to hatred, over time.
that's why if you have friends that are envying you you dress up nice they say ah now for you now like they, they wear share to people like that that's a sign for you to cut off from those friends you are looking good and they are envying you they are jealousy you it's a chance for you to cut off from those friends if not eventually they will hit on you and they'll set you up from the smell of mess you can tell the taste of shit People around you, if they start to envy you, you have you have a, a good job. They are laughing at you. Say, ah, but that job is you know is is it's a slave man job or people like that. You have a promotion in job. Nobody tell you well done or kudos. They are jealous in you. People like that stay away from them. If not, over time, now them go sabotage you. So this man now he has left those. That we have seen come out lively, say we are responsible for the protest. He has left them, he has left their tribe. He is pointing on the Igbos. When they were crying, a bim bawa, or we are hungry, the Igbos say we know send una, we are okay. Until you people start to chop rats and lizard, cassava leaf to make soup, we are okay you guys are not ready you think you are hungry but during our own time in the biafran war we they chop rats for protein so the suffering that you are going through is not even up to the level of what we have gone through so to us it's a child's play what you call suffering is a child's play you say the cost of tomatoes is expensive the cost of ugu um shokoyokoto vegetable is expensive none of you have set up using the leaf of popopo to cook soup i've not seen that yet for the fact none of you has caught a rat a cat a dog in fact a dog than na cow meat none of you are eating lizard for protein you guys have not even studied anything yet so don't expect us to get involved we went through that thing that scenario for three years 1967 to 1970 for three years there was no protein a total shutdown a blockade of food children became kwashoko children had kwashoko they became pregnant kids look like they were pregnant because of the kwashoko they are swollen stomach and the rest of them so what you are going through now with all due respect is child's play compared to what we've gone through that's why we are saying we're we ain't gonna get involved in what you are doing now because it's not yet level for us to be suffering what you are going through is not suffering with all due respect compared to what the beer france went through let's continue simply to fence their spleen on your nation but they are not happy hold it there our plan is to simply to fend our spleen on your nation he mentioned yoruba nation can you, can you imagine this in one vein he's talking about nigeria he's talking about the presidency He's talking about preserving Tinubu in power. And in the second vein, he's saying Yoruba nation, that our plan is to destroy the Yoruba nation. This is coming from an elderly man. At least, if he's not too old, he's in his 60s. And look at the kind of thing he's spilling out. This is what he's saying. He's spilling this out. Ah, oh, God, Nigeria. Ah, no, 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 no. Simon Ekba, please, oh, please, please, please. I cannot wait for the 2nd of December. Let, let's just, just end this nonsense. Because only a slave, only a beggar will choose to remain in a place where you are not wanted. Only a beggar will choose to remain in an environment where you are not wanted. You, you go to a party. Nobody is serving you drink. Nobody is serving you food. People are dancing. Nobody is dancing with you. You are hungry. Nobody is looking at you to, to take care of you. And you still remain in that party? Then the problem is you. Not the organizers of the party. 
because they've shown to you that you are not welcomed they've shown to you that you are not loved they've proved that you, you won't even taste any food or anything as a well-wisher you are not needed in that place it's time for you to find your way and leave that zoo with the beer friends we have to leave if not what happened to Kadan Ziogo will happen again imagine this you know a lie they told on a man in 1966 after 58 years we are still going through hell and mind you Kadan Ziogo was a military man oh. the military they have their barracks there has never been a time in that zoo called Nigeria where the military, whatever they do, their actions or inactions, they will not blame the civilians. It's never done. How come the case of Cardinal Ziogu was an exception? For example, case in point, M.K. Abiola, he won that election and the man who stopped him was general ibrahim badamosi babangida a man from niger state a hausa man or a fulani man he was a military man oh. he stopped the freest he, he annulled the freest and fairest election in that zoo but till this day nobody is attacking people from niger state Nobody is attacking the, the Northerners. Nobody is blaming the Norths for the sin of Bangida. Think about that. But how come in the case of Kadnan Ziogu, you are blaming the whole of the whole tribe, the Igbo race? Ziogu was a military man. Babangida was a military man. Babangida annulled the election of June 12th. Not only that, Abacha came into power. Abacha killed so many people of the Yoruba race. But nobody is blaming the Nuts for the sins of Abacha. Not only that, Abdul Salami Abu Bakr came into power. And it was in his watch that Chief MK Abiola was poisoned. Don't remember if you remember susan rice came from usa they saw abacha and abiola as a problem that must be solved so abacha was poisoned and abiola was also poisoned under the watch of absalom abubakar Ab abiola was poisoned in prison i sang the song i told you the song i sang as a child as a young boy in 1992 or was it the three when they killed him? I told you how they killed Abiola. When I said, Ah, they come bring the key. Oh my God, have mercy. I said, Ah, they come bring the tea. MK ho Abiola. Now who make the tea, yo? MK ho Abiola. Now who make the tea? MK ho abiola. How person asks for water, then can't give him tea, yo. How person asks for water, then come and give him tea, yo. Na so them kill him, MK ho abiola. Na so them kill him, yo. MK ho abiola. Na so them kill him, MK ho abiola. Na so them kill him, MK ho abiola. Since them poor man they suffer. That since then poor man they suffer since then so far start to you now since then so far start to you in my song i did not blame the northerners i spin it around i said then come bring the tea how person asks for water then come give him tea in the case of ababiola when he saw the american susan Rice, he said please can i have some water in a meeting there should be a glass of water there but they were clever when he said please can i have some water they said ah don't worry in fact we have a special tea for you american tea you see when i read during those days 
the account of somebody who was there on tell magazine when i was young i was reading tell magazine they said he asked for water can i have a glass of water because the meeting was going on you know these americans they are so clever they are so clever they colluded with nigeria the meeting was going on there was no jug of water no bottle of water on the table and this man has been locked up so he came out he became thirsty after some few hours discussing with the, with the american oh please can i can i have some water so oh in fact don't worry um we've got some tea for you american tea which is why in the song i said now who make the tea within then take you to make the tea say now nah, cowbell and pig milk are being a sugar and honey oh now nah, i saw them kill amu mko i be your land that's me being fair i wasn't being tribalistic i didn't even attack the northerners for the death of mk abiola but in the case of Kaduna and Ziyogu, they left him and they blamed the whole Igbo race. Where is that done? Military. You know, say for military rule, they have their own way of life. They call us the bloody civilians. We are not the same people. We are the military. We don't even think alike. What they do, they do for themselves alone. How come you, a man in Kaduna, they did what they did in Kaduna and you turn it around and you are blaming the Igbo tribe. First time in the whole world I've seen that. First time in the whole world I'm seeing that. When Hitler and his men killed the Jews. When America and the Jewish government were looking for those killers. They only went for the generals in Hitler's government. They went for the generals in Hitler's government. They didn't go out around attacking the Germans and all those things. It's not done. Be your friends, they don't love you. I will call it spade a spade. What this man is saying here is exactly how they see us. Envy turns to jealousy. Jealousy turns to hatred. Envy turns to jealousy. Jealousy turns to hatred. Let's continue. Listen. As they lost the 2023 uh, presidential elections, they are not happy. And those who are confessing for this insurrection, the felons, they are felons, confessing for this insurrection, are either Labour Party members or IPOB, they will stop in that party. Okay. Those calling or asking for these insurrections are either Labour Party members or IPOB. The Igbo stock is being more specific now. Not even everybody in Labour Party, because you know, in Labour Party, you have Hausa, Yoruba, Igbo, Delta, everybody there. He's saying, no, the Igbo stock. It means just those ones that are the Igbos in Labour Party. He's being more specific. He said IPOB. You and I know the meaning of IPOB. It means, or how should I put it now? It's an acronym for over 80 million people living in that zoo called Nigeria, in our own land known as Biafra. Or what you want to call the eastern region but this man is old age he has put everything on us ha huh. the Yorubas, you guys have some job to do things like this if not from our experience if not people like us we are critical thinkers People like us, we can juxtapose and, and see where this man is coming from. We can see the invisible hand controlling the affairs of this man. But to the average Igbos there, don't blame them when they start to say the Yorubas, you know, you are, you are this, you are that. You, don't blame them because they might just hear what this man is saying and they will take it on facial value. But for someone like me, because of my experience, I know who is behind what this man is saying. I know those who are advocating for things like this i know the invisible hand the puppet master controlling this man i know the paymaster of this man 
there is one new one called FOST, FOST, F-O-S-T. It means the friends of Sheyi Tinubu. It's a new movement now, like father, like son. The, the father is known as Jagaban. Now the son is called FOST, F-O-S-T, friends of Sheyi Tinubu. They are also campaigning, blaming the Igbos for the election or for the protest so get prepared for the next 30 years those that believe in nigeria get prepared the son will take over the sins of the father will fall upon the son but because of tribalism you guys will still bow down you will dobale for the son he's coming his father is doing all these things to put the son on a higher pedestal if not why should an 80 year old man be fighting for power be fighting for money when you are already a billionaire what do you want to do with money when will you spend the billions no he wants to set up his family line the bloodline that for the next 1000 years they'll be the rulers of that zoo called nigeria they'll be the afonjas to walk side by side with the Fulani Caliphate. I will end it here. For those who have ears, let them hear. For those who have ears, let them hear. They have come. What they did to Kaduna and Ziyogo, that we are still paying for it. The sins of Kaduna and Ziyogo, 58, 58 years after, we are still paying for it. We are still being punished for it. The sins of Cardinal Ziyogo, there is now a part two coming. Peter Obi, Peter Obi, we warned you about this election. We warned you not to get involved because we know Nigeria very well. Peter Obi, your own nickname now what? Obedient, Okute. Peter Obi, because of you, Biafrans in Lagos, all their businesses were destroyed because of you they told the lies that the Igbos want to take over lagos the only reason why we are still in lagos is because of the seaport in lagos because we are businessmen by nature we are into import and exportation that's our dna that's our trademark just like wherever you see a sugar you will see ants the same thing wherever there is a seaport you must see a biafra man there because we're into business if a seaport should come to the land of Biafra today, tomorrow the Igbos will move back immediately. We are not in Lagos to enjoy the weather. No. If not, we should have been in other states in Yoruba land. But no, what we're there in Lagos for is the seaport. And some years ago, Lagos was the capital. And a capital is always a metropolitan region. Around the whole world a capital is always the melting pot all the different tra race they'll be there the different tribes they'll be there lagos the only reason why the Igbos are there is because there is a seaport and you guys know from day one saying that business we're there into we're into business that is why we are there so please miss me on all this talk about the Igbos are coming to take over lagos Ronu, Yoruba, eh, Ronu, they are coming, they are coming. Amo Ibo. Amo Ibo Tideo, Amo Okoro. For those of you that didn't stay in Lagos, the other insult they call us is Okoro, Amo Okoro. That's the another insult. We went there for Lagos. We, when we say we go up for Lagos, I was hearing that all the time. Okoro, Okoro. It's, it's a vile thing to, to tell an Ibo man. Most of you, you, you only know Omoibo, Omoibo. There is one called Omo Okoro. I rest my case. From me, from here, for now, I want to say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. Thank you. Israel must be restored, for there is nothing the enemies can do about it. You brought Biafra that light may come into Africa. You gave us hope. 
because we are in a continent of hopelessness and by thy grace Biafra shall be restored we shall be resurrected we shall crown our efforts with the glory by the grace of the Most High himself we are not strong we do not pretend to be strong all we do is to submit ourselves to your will that your will may be done upon our lives we have lost many people we have lost so many good people their sacrifice will never be forgotten we shall honor them and for their sake Biafra will come because we are wandering all over the world hoping against every hope that things will turn around for the better it has never turned around for the better instead it is getting worse please do not abandon your children you have given us a commission and we must accomplish in our lifetime our enemies are equally important because they must listen those who do not love the truth must listen those who are beholden to darkness they must also listen for we are here to bring light upon a very darkened continent without Biafra Africa is nothing without Biafra there is no difference between a black man and a wild animal in the forest we say it with every, with every ounce of conviction I welcome each and every one of you if you are joining us for the very first time this is Radio Biafra this is how we do it we magnify the name of the Most High before we do anything that is why we are exceptionally formidable that is what yeah, check me out, Superstars Media, uh, Lord Lugan, blame it on Lord Lugan, and it's why Flora Show, 1914 Amalgamation, it's what we dying for, three nations to one nation, ever since annihilation, nepotism, it's nonsense, you and you, clap your hand, clap your hands, Biafra gonna come, clap your hand, clap your hands, uh, Biafra, Odudua, we're free now, Freedom is gonna come, we're free now. Yeah.